So I'm gonna start recording now. Um, my name is Areli Gonzalez. Thank you for joining us. I'm gonna be one of the presenters today and I'm gonna let my colleagues who are present um, in here now to, to introduce themselves as well. Go ahead, Luis. Go. Okay, <laughs> I was gonna let Stephanie go first. Um, yeah, go ahead, Stephanie. You can go and, and then I'll, I'll go at the end. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie Vega and I'm the Administrative Support Coordinator for Project Upgrades. Um, and then I can go last, I'm the least important. Uh, I'm the Director for Project Upgrades, Luis Molina. Um, you guys are a little bit more of a smaller group in the College of NSM. That's okay though. Uh, we'll still have a good presentation and all of the information you see here hopefully is beneficial. Um, I'll really talk a little bit about, you know, um, some of the things we're going to go over. Um, and some, uh, we're going to have uh, some evaluations be sent out to you via email as well, uh, coming from her. And that's just because um, we're, a, we're a grant, basically, uh, a grant from the Department of Education. We work in conjunction with Office of Grad Studies, and a lot of our activities and our goals are related to uh, making access to grad school, uh, you know, a little bit easier, providing resources for Hispanic and other underrepresented populations. Um, so a lot of what we do is uh, with that population in mind. But however, a lot of the activities, a lot of the grant resources and things that we that we have or that we do throughout the year, workshops and things like that are open to everyone. Um, so with that, I will be quiet and I'll let Adeli take over. You won't hear from me till about towards the end of that presentation. Thank you, Luis. So let's begin. Uh, we do have a packed agenda. And here are some of the items that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to give you a very brief introduction of what graduate school is and what it looks like to be in graduate school, how to find um, graduate programs or schools, uh, the application process in case that you choose to come to Costa Fullerton and what that, does, that looks like. Uh, funding, very important, of course. And if you choose to come to Costa Fullerton, we'll share some resources that you can find here um, as you become a graduate student. So the first question that comes to mind is why go to grad school? And I think this is a, a, the first step that you got to think about. And it's very important and very personal to you. Uh, but here are some of the things that some of the students that we've surveyed and, and that we've met have told us, and of course, for, from personal experience as well, um, why I chose to go to grad school. Uh, of course, greater income potential, that's something that we are seeking. Of course, we want to have a better quality of life. Um, some of the jobs that you may want to go to may require a, a master's degree. Um, or maybe you're already working in the industry and they're asking you to have a master's degree in order to get a promotion. Um, and right now with this COVID situation, maybe getting a graduate degree would put you in, a, in, in advantage right now to be unemployed. Um, but these are some of the things that, um, like I said, some of the students have shared with us. Like I said, it's going to graduate school, it's personal, you may have your own reasons. All, all of these are valid, of course. Um, potential jobs, since you are in the College of Natural Sciences um, and Mathematics, um, you may be thinking of being a biological technician or a math instructor or a data analyst, um, whichever you choose, whichever you want to do. Um, maybe a graduate degree may put you there and may, may allow you to, to achieve that career goal. But this is not a comprehensive list. Um, this is just something that you know, we put together and we think, oh, these are some of the jobs that students may think of, but um, just know that there's um, greater potential and that you can find any other job having a, a graduate degree. And we like to share this because there is a difference in, in salary, right, in, in your earnings. Um, of course, you're in graduate school. Um, I'm sorry, you're in on, on the graduate career uh, because you want to get a better job and because you want to get a better um, salary. So uh, as you get your bachelor's degree, this may be the starting salary that you may get. Um, and of course, this depends in, in your experience and where you're working at and um, if you're thinking of relocating or whatnot, right? But look at the difference between um, bachelor's degree and graduate degree. There's a big difference, right? And, and 
like I said, some of, some of us are looking for that better quality of life by, by earning a better salary. Um, you can find more information uh, at the Georgetown University uh, website. This is where we got our source. Um, this is also not a definitive um, list. This vary in industry and um, company, but it's sort of like an umbrella of what you may expect um, if you receive a graduate degree and what you can earn in your salary. So now the next question, right? Um, what does graduate school look like? Um, like I said, going to graduate school, it's a very personal situation. Um, it's a personal choice. In my case, I was very caffeinated through graduate school. I needed to get through my assignments and being able to get through all my readings. Um, for you, maybe you are working full time, right? Or maybe you do get to see your family members. I don't know. Every experience is different and, and every experience is valid. But just to give you a glimpse of what graduate school looks like. Um, first, we start with the structure and the knowledge. As a graduate student, you may be going to classes, to lectures, to labs and learning. And at some point you're getting tested and then you prove that you know what you've learned, right? That what, they, what the professor taught you that you know it. And, and then if the best, the better grade that you get, the better that you're doing in your graduate, in, in their graduate program. Um, for graduate school, it's a little bit different. Um, you get to be part of the conversation of the knowledge that you're learning. Um, for your specific college, that may look like being part of lab um, or research projects, um, being able to participate in the findings and putting together papers um, that could be published uh, with those findings. But the main key is that you are now part of the conversation, right? Now you're working with colleagues rather than um, a professor and a student relationship. Also, the academics and the courses are different for um, graduate students. As an undergraduate, um, it's very structured. Like I said, um, if you have a 3.0 GPA, you're in good academic standing, you're doing really good. Um, as a graduate student, if you have a 3.0 GPA and you fall below that, you may be put in academic probation. And why is that? Um, it's more rigorous. Um, when you go into a graduate program, they expect a lot more out of you. Um, like I said, you're, now you're working with colleagues, right? You, you're putting together knowledge and sharing it with, with your colleagues. So it, it is a lot more stricter. And the courses, right? Um, right now you may be used to go to your classes. I know some math classes at Fullerton go for, for you meet four times a week. Uh, maybe in, in your graduate program, you meet less, right? And maybe one once a week or twice a week. Um, if you meet once a week, that may be a three hour long class, um, you know, and it may be a discussion, more, more sort of like a, a guided discussion rather than learning and having a lecture. And also, um, the course load is different. Uh, as an undergraduate, you may be taking 12 or 15 units and you're comfortable with that and you're doing well with that. But as a graduate student, it's different because like I said, it's, it's stricter. They expect more out, out of you. So six units is full time, nine units is it's full time. So no, six units is part time, nine units is full time. But you know, and, and you get to add your classes um, to what fits your schedule and what works for you. And you know, once you get to the end of your graduate um, degree, you have to do a culinary experience. And this could be a thesis, a project, or comprehensive exams. Some programs give you the, the choice of pick one of this. Um, some programs that only let you do one. Um, that depends on the graduate program. Maybe for, the, um, for your college, for, for the Natural Sciences and Mathematics College, you may be able to do a thesis on a project, given that um, you have to go to labs and do findings and maybe there's a project that you're already working on as a graduate student um, and could also be a stepping stone for you, right? Maybe you're thinking of going into a graduate, um, a PhD program and you need a thesis in order to apply to this specific program. Um, but check with the program, check what you need to do. I believe um, as you enter your graduate program, that let you know which experience 
um, you will be doing and they give you a choice or and a timeline of when to choose this. And at least at Fullerton, we have support um, if you're writing thesis, we have different resources that you can access to in case that that's, that's what you're doing. Now that I tell you what graduate school looks like and what is expected and you know the experience of it, um, it's time to think about finding a graduate program that fits your career goals and, and what you want to do um, with in life. So one of the things that we tell students is to discover your interests, right? Um, you may like what you're doing right now as an undergraduate student and you want to pursue more of that, or you may be thinking, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to explore other things. And that's okay. You know, that, that's perfectly fine to do, but you have to find that for yourself. And, you know, it's okay to do that. Then, now that you find your interests, now that you know what you want, you start researching for schools and programs that fit what you want to do. And then once you have the school or, or a list of schools that you want to apply to, um, you start preparing your application and, and the materials that you need to submit for these applications. So how do you find um, interest or how do you find if the field that you're in, it's the right field for you? I had a meeting yesterday with a student and she was asking me, you know, how do I strengthen my resume um, to go into graduate school and to be a better graduate student? And I told her, you know, right now it's a little bit hard with COVID. Um, we're not meeting in person. Um, some conferences are not meeting uh, at all, but your best bet is to attend virtual conferences um, or do national um, or local organizations in your, in your field, right? Uh, Fullerton has a list of um, student organizations that you can be part of, that you can put on your CV, on your resume, that you can add to your application to make it stronger, right? Um, and also, it allows you to see if, if this is what you want to do, if, if you want to work with the people in the field as you're meeting them in, in these conferences or organizations. And of course, doing research projects. Um, if you want to go into the private industry, you can do volunteer or internships um, at a specific company that you're interested in working at after you graduate. And this is also very important to develop your faculty references. Um, one, because some, if not all, graduate programs ask you to provide letters of accommodations. Um, but also because some of these faculty relationships that you will establish um, will become mentors, right? And that's just knowledge and guidance that no one can give you. Um, for personal experience, I had had mentors who have helped me through the process of graduate school and have supported me through it, and now are supporting me through my professional career, right? And they help me navigate um, certain decisions and certain um, situations. So it may be the same for you. Go to office hours, um, ask if they allow you to be part of um, research um, projects or labs and start, you know, nourishing those relationships. And, and when you're ready to apply, you get a strong letter of recommendation. And, you know, just to capture everything that I said, make sure that you look for programs that fit your needs. Like I said, if you are thinking of going out of state, look for programs that are out of state that feed um, what you want to do, um, what works for you as a person. Will this program allow you to work full time or part time? Uh, will they provide you with a stipend? Whatever that is, right? And of course, look for funding opportunities. Um, graduate school could be expensive, but there's opportunities out there that can help you find your education. And how to find this, um, this information or the rankings, right? Um, we have getting questions about students of, of they say, well, how do we do the rankings? How, how do we know which one to choose? Um, like I said, it's very personal. There's some um, searchers out there that can tell you the, the number one school in mathematics, right? And, and then you're inclined to go to, to that school. But that's not the only school, right? You have to look for something that fits what you want to do, the specific project that you want to work on. And of course, um, a lot of factors go into putting your own rankings. So we have these websites here. We can share them with you on the chat box if, if we can. Uh, but this is, like I said, this is not a definite 
um, definitive list. These are not the only websites. There's many more that you can find. And just doing a quick search on Google may, may allow you to find more information on programs. So now I think we're ready for questions. Um, I don't think we have any, which is okay. Or you can unmute yourself and if you have any questions, we can do that as well. No. Could you add the websites on the chat box, please, if you can? Wait, I actually do have a question. Yeah. Okay, so because I went into my major, like the science major late, so I don't have like the highest like science GPA right now. Um, would you just like add like random classes that would raise it to look good for grad school? Because what if you're under their um, GPA like requirement? Like how would you deal with that? So that depends, right? Um, I know the some admissions offices look at a cumulative GPA um, to make sure that you meet the minimum required of the GPA. But if you don't, they may look at the last 60 units of your transcripts. Um, so you could either take more classes, which may or may not be a good thing, um, but also think that GPA is not the only thing that the schools and programs are looking at. Um, I know some programs may have a specific GPA requirement, but they're also asking for letters of recommendations. They also may be asking for GRE scores, right? Or they may be asking for um, work experience or in your case, maybe lab experience, right? Um, so it's a comprehensive application that may, you may look at. So I recommend that you speak with the graduate advisors for these programs and let them know, you know, be, um, be honest with them, let them know what your situation is. Um, it may be a possibility that you can apply and you can be conditionally admitted. Um, and the condition may be that you just have to do well on your first semester or, or the first two semesters of your graduate program. But all depends, like I said, it's, it's specific to your case and the program that you want to go to. I hope I answer your question. Yeah, thank you. I gotta, yeah, I have to add a little bit to that as well. Um, so, as you're gonna see with the next section of this presentation, applying to grad programs becomes very, very individual to you and individual to the program that you're applying to. All grad programs, uh, you know, are gonna have, uh, their, their admission requirements are gonna vary. Um, so, I, I'm gonna get into this in the second portion, I believe. You know, there's going to be a university requirement, GPA. That one's really, uh, you know, not that scary. It's a 2.5, but um, that's just to apply to the university. You're going to see that you're going to have to apply to the program as well. And program GPA requirements, most of the time, are a little bit higher, especially in NSM, from what I've seen. Um, they're a little bit higher. So the program's going to say, you know, we want a 2.8 or a 3.0. Um, and you're going to want to look at that carefully because some programs are going to say we're looking for a 3.0 or a 2.8 in your upper level courses, right? So the ones that matter, like you said, the sciences and things like that. So, um, you know, other classes that you might have done bad in, if, if it wasn't in your major classes, then that's not going to really, you know, hold, they're not going to hold it against you. But again, it just depends on the program that you're applying to. Um, um, another thing I've seen in NSM is that some programs, you know, are going to want to see that you completed certain courses with a certain grade. Um, so I've seen this in psychology. I think NSM might have some. It says like you have to complete, you know, whatever course and this course and that course, and you must have received the B or better in order to apply. Um, so again, I, I repeat, you have to look at the programs that you're applying to and see what are they looking for, because it's very, very individualized. Um, yeah, for the most part. And, and like I really mentioned, some, if, if some, if they're just, they just care about the overall GPA, some will do, the, do you the favor of looking at the last 60 units, because usually, right, those are the upper divisions, and usually people tend to, you know, uh, take some time to uh, uh, get used to uh, school and maybe don't do as well in their freshman and sophomore year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
guys. Um, any other questions? I don't see any on the chat box. So I'm gonna move along. Um, if you think of a question or something comes up, like I said, use the chat box or we have another section of questions coming up as well. So now you did your research, um, you know what graduate stu um, school may look like and you choose to come to Cal State Fullerton. What does that application process looks like? Well, first you have to, um, to apply to the university and the program. Unlike undergraduate admissions, um, graduate school and graduate admissions at Fullerton, it's a two-step process that happens simultaneously. And like Luis was mentioning, right, um, when you apply to the university, you have to meet a minimum GPA requirement, which is 2.5 GPA. And if you meet that requirement, then your application will be forwarded to the program. And then the program will be waiting for um, the requirements that you have to submit specific to that program. That's why it's a two-step process. Um, you apply to the university um, by going to Costly Apply, the Costly Apply website. Um, I'm sure um, some of you are familiar with it. Um, I think we, we have enough students that used it. Um, you know, personal information, educational information, and then um, there may be a, a section for the program requirements that I'll show you in a little bit. But make sure that when you're applying to the university that you're meeting all required materials that you're submitting them. And usually that means official transcripts from all community college, colleges or universities that you have attended. Um, and sometimes language scores if, if that applies to you. But if you're a CSU graduate um, and you're going into graduate school and applying to graduate school at CSUF, you do not need to submit official transcripts unless stated um, on the application or um, on the program requirements. So you submit your application to the university, you have everything there, now you have to submit the program specific requirements, right? And this, like I said, is specific to your program, it's specific to to the department that you're applying to. Um, in this case, they may ask you for, you know, statement of purpose. Um, they may ask you for proof of lab, right? Um, for, for those of you that are in sciences. Um, go to the department website. It's very, very important that you do that because that's where you're gonna find what they're looking for. Um, how many letters of recommendations you need. There may be a, a possibility that you can submit this with your um, CASTE Apply application. Not all programs use um, CASTE Apply to collect program requirement, um, um, specific requirements, but some do. If they don't and you don't see it in your CASTE Apply application, we recommend that you check the department website and you send an email to the graduate program advisor. And just to um, show you a visual of what I'm talking about in the CASTE Apply application, um, the four quadrant, which I'm pointing with my cursor, um, that says program uh, materials, that's where you may be able to submit uh, the letters of recommendations and your CV or whatever requirements are for that specific program. Um, like I said, in case that you go into your application and you don't see an option to submit anything, check with the department, check with the graduate advisor and make sure that you know you submitted everything um, where they wanted to find it and on time as well. And then application deadlines, uh, of course, right? The most important thing, you, you don't wanna submit things late. Uh, make sure that for the university application, you go to cost they apply. And then for the department uh, application, you go to that specific um, website um, to make sure that you're meeting that deadline. Some programs have early um, deadlines, like in January, and some programs have late deadlines, like early summer. Um, all applications open October 1st for the fall semester. If you're going into graduate school in fall semester, uh, make sure that you check the deadlines. Like I said, applications open October 1st. If you're not sure of a deadline or you cannot find it on the specific department website, uh, we also have the Office of Graduate Studies um, website right here. We can share with you on the chat box as well. And you can navigate all of the programs that we offer on, on, um, on campus. I think it's between 54, 55. 
Um, but take a look at it. It's, it's never uh, a bad idea to navigate these different websites and get the information that you need. And, you know, just to finalize with this section, um, these are some of the programs that are offered um, at the College of Natural Sciences and Mathematics. Um, this may be of your interest. Make sure that you take a look at them. Each specific program has its own website. Um, and like I said, they detail the information of what requirements you need to submit and by when and the contact information of the graduate advisor. So now, again, we have questions. Um, feel free to either unmute yourself or type it on the, on the chat box. No questions? Is there anything that you want to add, Luis, um, in the process for applying? Here we go. Now I'm going to mute it. No, um, just again, just I can't stress enough how it's very individualized to your program. So it's a lot of info that we're throwing at you. Uh, that's why we have, you know, room for questions. And um, so, you know, you have us here. Um, if you have specific questions, go ahead and ask. Um, however, you know, like I said, this is a lot of information. It's really hard to put it in an hour, but this is our best attempt at it. But uh, the conversation doesn't have to end here. You should all, if you're interested in applying to a program at Cal State Fullerton, you should all make an appointment with Aeli, whose job is, you know, meeting with students and helping them apply. So um, Aeli, if you want to put the, the advising thing on there, it's, it's grad advising at fullerton.edu. It's, it's really easy to remember. Uh, and you could also put um, our webpage on there to see the, the sort of things that we're doing. Our webpage is kind of, mm, you know, in, in the process of, of getting a little bit aesthetically more pleasing, but you know, it's useful even then. Um, but yeah, definitely take advantage of, of us, uh, of Areli and, 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 and uh, schedule an appointment if, if, if you would like uh, to discuss like what the process looks for you and the program that you're interested in. Perfect. I'm putting the website that you mentioned, Luis, and the email as well. Okay. Um, and I think Luis now is going to go over funding opportunities for graduate students and resources once you come to campus and you're a graduate student here. Yeah, so let me share the right screen. This thing always gets in the way. Slideshow. Uh, You went over this, right? And then here, this is where we're at. Whoops, why did I get out of? Here we go. This is where we're at, right? Funding for graduate yes. school. Mm -hmm. All right. So hopefully we still have you guys, uh, your guys' attention. Now let's go over some very important things, right? Money. Um, so if you do decide to go to Cal State Fullerton or, or continue to stay at Cal State Fullerton, I should say, for your graduate education, you can take advantage of something that's called the State University Grant. So a big misconception in, that I've seen from students is that they think that there's no financial aid for uh, grad school, which is not accurate, right? It's, it's a little bit more limited. Um, so whereas an undergrad, you have your Cal Grants, you have your Pell Grants, um, you know, and then you might have some grant that the school gives you or a scholarship that the school gives you to help pay for tuition. It's, it's a lot more limited in grad school. However, if you choose Cal State Fullerton or any other Cal State, there's something called the State University Grant, which are state funds that cover uh, your tuition for the entirety of your program. So it's a pretty good incentive. Um, however, you do uh, have to be, um, you know, you have to submit your either a FAFSA, which uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, or a California Dream Act, right, if you identify as AB 540. So either of those applications, you know, you, you submit one, not, not both, but either one of those um, 
if you submit them by the priority deadline, which is March 2nd, will allow you to be considered. All right, it's based on your income. So there is a certain income level, which I, I, I don't have that information, I wish I can tell you, but from what I've seen, if, if, if students work part-time or maybe they're not working through the grad program, more than likely that they qualify. Uh, a pretty cool thing is that as a grad student, when you apply for uh, financial aid, your parents' income isn't taken in consideration. You're automatically considered an ind uh, independent. Even if you live at home, even if you're still eating their food, driving their cars, you're considered independent just because you're a grad student and therefore their income has no bearing on your financial aid. You know, if, for some of you that might have been an issue in undergrad, okay? But just remember the priority deadline is March 2nd. If you miss that deadline, you will not be considered at all. So you can forget about it. Um, but so keep that date in mind. It's a little bit um, counterintuitive for your first year because say, for example, you're a senior right now. You have to apply for financial aid for grad school, you know, before March 2nd of, of you know, this, this upcoming March, even though you're not going to start grad school till fall 2021, right? For some of you, you're not even going to get a decision yet from your program by March 2nd, but don't let that stop you from applying to FAFSA or CDA, the California Dream Act, by that, by that deadline, all right, if you want to be considered for the state university grant. And like I said, it covers your tuition, which is, what, 98, 99% of, of the funds. Tuitions, I think, around, I mean, this might have changed, but it's around um, 6000 per semester, depending on the program. Um, I have a link to financial aid, and you can go and, and learn more about that on your own. Um, and it does cover it for a maximum uh, unit of 125%. You also have to keep that in mind when else you run into trouble. It's more than 100% just because it allows you to take a few prerequisites. Some of you will need to take some prerequisites uh, to be fully admitted. Like Areli mentioned, you can be conditionally admitted, which means you know, you're know you admitted, but you need to complete one prereq or two prereqs, and then you become fully admitted. So if your program is 30 units, that 125% that allows you to take 33 or 36, something like that, units for your whole program. Once you capped out, there's no more funds. Um, so hopefully by then, right, you, you finished your program. It's not like undergrad where you can kind of, uh, you know, experiment and, and oh, I want to take this class this semester, see how this is, right? No, this is just very, your field, very directed. You get in, you take your classes that are required to get your graduate degree and, and you're done. All right, uh, now for the less popular option, right, loans. Uh, so uh, during right now, this pandemic, they, they reduced them a little bit. They usually like around, well, the last time we checked, they were around 6%. And it, the, the trend is that they go up every year. Um, you know, they go up every year. Right now, these are currently uh, what's stated on studentloans.gov because of the pandemic. Uh, but the main point you want to take from this slide is that there aren't any more subsidized loans for grad students. There isn't such a thing. So whereas in undergrad, you can get a subsidized loan, you take out funds, right? The government pays your interest. That's not a thing for grad school. Um, the only thing you can get is the unsubsidized. Okay, so the interest starts occurring right away. Um, and you can take out as much as 20,500 per year because the government is thinking you might need right housing, uh, gas, utility bills, all that stuff. But from what I've seen, nobody really needs that much amount of money. And we really, really need to be conscious of what we're taking out in loans anyway, right? Um, shouldn't be using it for vacations or things like that or traveling, right? Because they, they are going to impede your quality of life later on. Trust me, I know firsthand. Um, so be very, very mindful of the loans that you're taking out. If 20500 isn't enough, there's a federal direct plus loan, that second bullet for grad students if you need to exceed that. But like I said, you probably don't. Um, for private loans, uh, it's just, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, financial institutions like Bank of America, things like that. Uh, I'm sure there's not any like Sally Mae anymore. Those got, you know, shut down things for predatory lending. Um, so we just added that, um, but yeah, not super complicated. Hopefully you don't need to take this route. Hopefully you only maybe need a little bit, 
I've heard some students getting a state university grant and it covers your tuition, but it doesn't cover those student fees like the rec center and all that, which is like 600 a semester. And sometimes they take out a loan for that. And, and you know, that's, that's very little. So that's, that's manageable. Um, okay. Let's see. Scholarship opportunities. So this is NSM focus. So these are some of the scholarship opportunities that we saw for NSM students, right? So some of these, if you want to look into them, there's links right there. Or if you want to, uh, you know, uh, ask Adeli about them, then feel free to uh, email her. Um, take a look at them if you're interested. Maybe they're only for current grad students, so they're not that you know um, beneficial for you now, but will be in the future. But take a look at them, and if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. And if we don't have the answer, we'll put you in contact with someone who does. Okay, so here's another one right there as well. Um, and scholarships have very, some of them have very, very uh, um, specific reasons why they're funding you. So, so take a look and read them carefully. Uh, because sometimes we get kind of carried away and we just submit something and we reuse applications. Be careful when we're using applications. It's very, very easy to tell when someone just, you know, reuses a, an old personal statement um, instead of kind of just tweaking it. No one says you can't reuse it, right? Just tweak it a little bit so it meets what they're looking for, okay? Don't just send it off. Um, and then a uh, funding opportunity through us, through this grant, is the Palante Fellowship Program which lucky you guys, we are focusing on the College of NSM as well as three others. Um, so we are offering fellowships to students um, that are you know, Hispanic or, or underrepresented populations, and we're giving them a thousand dollar scholarship, but that's not the cool part about it. You know, money is cool, you need it. But the great thing is that we also pair students with a mentor, a faculty mentor, um, so that you can have someone there to correspond to ask about, you know, questions about your careers, your future careers, the field, things like that. Um, and, and in addition to that, you meet with your cohort from that college. So NSM usually gets about, I want to say, eight students, um, you know, just because the enrollment is a little lower for Hispanics and underrepresented in that college. So we're hoping to change that. So maybe later on, it, the, the, the spots expand a little bit more. Um, and you will have a faculty director for that college. Um, our faculty director is Dr. Um, Maria Soledad Ramirez. A lot of you might, you know, have seen her around or worked with her already. Um, and then the other very cool thing is that our application process is not the same as other scholarships. We are not a merit scholarship. We're not looking at GPA, you know, what you've done you know, that you're the top in your class. All that is really, really cool. And I commend you if that's, you know, that's you. Uh, but there's a lot of scholarships for students like that. This one is intentionally trying to get students that need the funds, that need the extra help, that need the support, um, you know, in addition to the funds as well. So application process is you, it's a questionnaire. You check out a bunch, you check a bunch of things online and then an ask, you two questions open-ended that you can probably answer in, in, in two sentences or, or three. And, and that's how we're doing it. We're making it really, really easy for students to apply because like I said, the other merit scholarships are, are sometimes very, very involved. I love our scholars program. This is a scholarship that uh, was created by another grant that was awarded prior to this one. And, and obviously the Oscar grad studies took it over. Uh, because it's a good program. In the past, the amount has been $2,000. Uh, but I think, you know, things are kind of shaky right now because of the pandemic. Offices are, are cutting here and there. So don't quote me on that. It might change. If you're interested in this, again, email Areli and we can connect you to the person that's managing this program from the Office of Grad Studies. Uh, their application is more similar to the, to the, to the you know, the popular one. It's a personal statement and one letter of recommendation, but it's not that involved. Sometimes uh, scholarships want like two or three. So you apply, but again, this one is also going to focus on students that need support and that are identified as, you know, Hispanic or underrepresented students as well. Um, so very similar to what they're, to us and what, we're, what they're looking at, just the application process and the funding might be different, okay? Also, if, you know, hopefully, I'm hoping all of you guys apply, 
hopefully Cal State Fullerton. If if we if if we're offering something that you're interested in, if not, then you know you you can look elsewhere. Um, and hopefully you all remember to apply for financial aid. Hopefully you all get the state university grant. Hopefully you all get you know some type of scholarship, either Elevar or Palante. Which I may add, if you look at the deadline, right? They're April and May. So some of you may have been accepted, may have not been accepted by the deadline. Feel free to apply. I encourage you to apply even if you haven't received a response from your grad program. We do want first year students, um, but because of the you know academic year, we have to make the deadline so that we can pick by the next fall, right? So if if you if you're awarded, if you're selected. Uh, we'll give you, we're going to give you the scholarship when you begin your program, as long as you're accepted, of course, we can't give you the money if you're not accepted. All right, so I encourage you guys to apply if you want first year students. Uh, so back to this. So after, you know, hopefully you secure all that funding I talked about, but you still might need, you know, if, if unless you already have a job, you still might need some pocket money, right, or, 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 or extra funds. Um, so now just a couple of things that you can look out for are graduate assistantships. Um, you know, we use GAs for a number of things, administrative things. Uh, there are research assistantships too that, you know, that's a little bit more popular in, in your college as well as the teaching assistant as well, you know, grading or actually maybe even teaching um, lower division courses. Um, so those, the only bad thing about that is that they're not really listed anywhere. They're usually posted in like success centers around campus, or you have to talk to a faculty member, or maybe go to the career center. Whenever we get um, offices that are looking, and, and sometimes they come to us and they ask us to help spread the word, then we will, we'll email. Um, so that grad advising email is very, very important when you, um, when you are a graduate student at Cal State Fullerton, because we definitely send out opportunities like that. Um, so just be aware of these. The only good thing about that they're not being heavily marketed is that when you find one, your your your, your percentage of uh, securing it is is way higher, right? Because you might be one of two applicants, or you know, one of three. So keep that in mind. Uh, now, um, a little bit of transitioning. How am I doing on time, Marily? I can't see it because this is full screen. You're good. You still have. We have like 20, 17 minutes left. Oh, okay. All right. I don't have to really rush. Um, so hopefully, right, when you're accepted and you're coming to Cal State Fullerton, here are some things to look out for. Um, the Office of Grad Studies, which is the umbrella, right, of all grad programs. We have 55 different programs, 54, 55, I can't remember. Um, so the Office of Grad Studies is the umbrella. They're the ones that, you know, your study plan gets filed under that office. Uh, if you ever fall in academic probation, which I think I'd really covered, right, you need to have a 3.0 or higher to be in good academic standing as a grad student. Um, you will receive something from them saying that you have two semesters to get out of academic probation. Uh, it's, you know, grad school is a little bit more rigorous. It happens to a lot of us and, and there's nothing to be afraid of. You know, you just, you, again, you can contact them. They have an evaluator whose name is Lynn Winter, and she talks to students about, you know, how to strategize to get out. You can talk about Ellie. You know, we're all here for support uh, to make sure that you have a good experience, that you're successful, and that you graduate. Um, let's see. Like I said, Lynn Winter is there for academic policy support and some advising. Ellie advises a lot more of incoming students like yourselves. Um, and then that office, the Office of Grad Studies, at the end, you will have to notify them when it becomes time for you to graduate. You do something that's called the grad check. You tell them. They have to be notified, right? They, they don't know when you're going to graduate. So once your study plan is almost done, you meet with your grad advisor, and then you go do the grad check, and then you graduate. Um, and hopefully, right, by then, we're, we're not in this, and you're going to get a walk across that stage. Um, not like how, you know, these, these students are graduating nowadays because of a current situation, which is unfortunate. Um, the Graduate Student Success Center, this is something else that was, uh, that began, it was built out by the previous grant and it became uh, institutionalized, right? So they offer the grad studies now took it over. Uh, it's a space that's specific for grad students. It's in the library, South Side 365, right? Um, and this was really, really cool because there was never an area that was just for grad students. 
So when it was open, when, when campus was open, right, this was a really good place that was utilized heavily by grad students. There was computers, printers, uh, whiteboards, and they have um, what they call graduate success consultants there as well, which are tutors, but it's not like peer to peer like it is in, 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 in undergrad, sorry. It's, it's actually, these are full on professors that meet with you, that you can meet free of charge, free service, right? Um, and most of them help with writing. Um, so that might not be something that's, um, um, you know, valuable that, as an NSM student, I, I foresee you guys spending a lot of time in labs and things like that. But, you know, you never know when it comes to write your thesis, they're really, really good with uh, providing uh, feedback for, for papers and things like that. Um, they also, you know, when it was open, they would have host a few workshops there. The most popular one, or the one that, you know, for sure they offered every semester was the thesis one because, uh, and that one just covered structure. Uh, if you don't know, you're gonna have, from some of you, you're gonna have to do a thesis when it comes time for you to graduate. Um, the huge research paper, right? And it needs to be formatted a certain way because it does get published through, you, through the university. Um, so those are the kind of workshops that they focused on. We have, uh, uh, you know, Project Upgrads has a lot of other workshops that are meant to kind of prepare you for your career, uh, you know, interviewing skills, uh, LinkedIn stuff, right? And negotiating your salary. Uh, so once you're a grad student, obviously you'll find out a little bit about those because we are here to stay until 2024, I wanna say. So hopefully, right, those are the com incoming grad students, you will get to see us or our workshops at least, not literally us. Ah, there we go. So now this is the end of the line. Um, we have our final, right? The end is the questions and answers. So if you must go, right? If you have to leave us, if you have the class or something else, just keep in mind that you will be receiving, oh, this is the last slide I should share, contact info. Uh, you will be receiving a, um, a, a workshop survey. And like I said, we are grant funded, so we're always, always required to prove that we're doing these workshops. And that's the way that we prove that we're doing them, that we're actually doing what we're being paid to do, right? Um, and the other thing is that we want your feedback to make sure that we're providing the most beneficial information to you. This one, like I said, is really, really hard. That's a lot of info, so hopefully you got something out of it. And at the very least, you got to see us, you got to see our faces. And, and at the very least, you know that you can reach out to Areli and, and she can help you with your um, grad school application, okay? Now, let's see. Okay, Areli, thanks so much. You put a bunch of links on the chat box. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll open up for questions. We actually ended kind of early. You can unmute yourself, you can type it in. Um, for those that are interested in the video, maybe later, that's going to get published in our uh, YouTube channel um, that we're barely creating, so that might take some time. So it might might be better to just email out Ellie if you have any questions about the presentation later. That, that'll be a lot quicker. Yes, I agree. No questions. No, no, no. All right. Well, if you need to go and you don't have any questions, um, you know, that's completely fine. We, we're not going to get, you know, offended that you're leaving the video meeting. Um, so have a good one. I'm glad you guys showed up. Glad you guys care about grad school. Um, it's definitely something to consider. I, I, I highly encourage it as well. Um, and it's definitely a trend that's going up. Jobs are getting harder to secure, right? So now the employers are looking for that higher degree. All right. So have a good one. If you guys got to go, it was nice seeing at least your names or pictures. <laughs>